What a picture. When I was a boy, red bowl cattle were seldom seen outside Norfolk and Suffolk. Such herds as these can now be found all over the country, and with good reason. They fit so well into many varied systems of farming. Their outstanding dual-purpose qualities, milk combined with beef, their naturally polled character and recognised longevity enable them to occupy a prominent place in Britain's livestock industry. Red bull cattle in their native surroundings are often subject to drought conditions. You can here see the dried up pasture. Look at the condition of these in-calf heifers on poor grass. Good doers under hard conditions. And now the yearling heifers later to come into the herd. The whole of the steer calves in this large herd are carried on for beef. Let us look at more herds well spread over the whole of the country. Some of them established 20, 30 and even 50 years ago. Showing average yields ranging from 800 to 1,000 gallons all capable of producing steers of the highest quality. Red bowls for the last five years have been consistently placed third against all breeds in the statistics of average milk yields published by national milk records. As an instance of their dual purpose qualities, at the 1936 Smithfield show, the prize winner in the old steer class was a two years, nine months animal weighing 13 to the quarter hundred weights, and out of the cow, which had averaged a thousand gallons for five years. These performances are typical of the herds you've been seeing. The English farmer has been presented by his ancestors with a priceless asset, dual-purpose cattle, which produce steers like these. You all know that Britain's future meat supplies must be largely home-produced, but more beef must not mean less milk. This dual-purpose breed will supply both. Red pearl beef is of the highest quality and the cash return forms a welcome addition to the milk check. The fact that the animals are polled enables the producer to keep a far greater number in existing buildings than would be possible with horn cattle, thereby treading more store to return fertility to the land. Note these facts. At the last Smithfield show in the class for steers under 15 months, seven red poles averaged nine and a quarter hundred weights, compared with eight and eight and a quarter hundred weights for two noted pure beef breeds. The previous year's breed champion at the Norwich Fat Stock Show weighed 1,500 weights at two years and seven months and was out of a cow that averaged 850 gallons with her first four calves. Facts are stubborn things. A polled head has obvious advantages. Dairy farmers and stock breeders are well aware of the damage that is caused by horning. In 
these pictures, red poles are packed closely together in yards. You can see for yourself how little damage is likely to be done when the stock are without horns. Red pole cattle are naturally hornless with all the attendant advantages. Here are cows going through narrow doorways into milking sheds and in confined yards which form such healthy and comfortable winter quarters. They do not damage one another. We all know that on occasions when a stranger is introduced, cattle will sometimes disagree. Hello, here's a fight. What a blessing they're polled. I can't get on the screen to separate them. Never mind, they won't do much harm. Imagine this fellow joining in. One reason why red pole bulls are used abroad is because their progeny, even from this sort of beast, are polled. In tropical and fly-infested countries, this has a special advantage. No open wounds from horns and every inch of shade used to the full. On a hot day, they shelter peacefully from flies and heat. Now look at some grading up cattle. A most interesting way of obtaining a pedigree herd is by grading up from non-pedigree cattle of good red pole type. The Red Pole Cattle Society maintains a grading register for these animals, and after the use of four top crosses of pure Red Pole blood, the heifers can enter the herd book as fully pedigree animals. Here's another herd being graded up. Some cows are purebred, whilst others are in the grading register. But their heifer calves, such as these, in due course become eligible for the herd book proper. Owing to the dominance of a red pole bull as a sire, practically 100% of the progeny inherit the outstanding qualities of the breed. Many of these steers are crossbreds. A feature of the breed is the number of cows that live to a great age. The average age of this herd is eight years. The Milk Marketing Board has proved through its Bureau of Records that compared with the average for all other breeds, half as many more red poles reach their sixth lactation whilst at the 10th lactation there are four times as many. This cow, 19 years old, is suckling her 17th car. I knew of another who lived to be 20, never exceeded five gallons a day, yet she gave 83 tons of milk. Now a 12-year-old, an 800-gallon cow, typical of what can be found in many herds. The cow at the back of these three is a 14 years old and a 50 ton yielder, still milking well. The other two are her daughters, which have averaged over 900 gallons with a butter fat of 4.2. Low herd replacements ensure economical production. This cow, now 10 years old, has averaged 1,000 gallons with her first seven calves. Here we have a group, the progeny of one cow, a 50-ton yielder. There are 22 of them. There were 31, but some have been sold. It is interesting that eight of this group average 900 gallons with their first calves. Conversion of existing buildings to modern methods of milk production with bale and yard systems is simplified with red pole cattle. 
This old barn is an example of an economical adaptation. It illustrates what will probably become an increasingly popular method of milking in the future. There are distinct advantages. Capital outlay is low, working expenses are reduced, production costs are lowered. Some people prefer a large bale. Here's one of the largest of its kind in the country. Another satisfactory conversion to the bale and yard system carried out some 20 years ago. Another point of great interest is the docility of bulls of this breed. This quiet old gentleman is 12 years of age and led on a plain halter. Three bulls, tethered in the same field, graze quietly under natural conditions. In addition to being docile, the breed is very hardy, withstanding extremes of heat and cold. Many herds are wintered out day and night whatever the weather, maintaining excellent yields under hard conditions. Their native East Anglia, with its biting east winds, has during the years ensured the hardiness which enables them to withstand such conditions as you now see. At the same time as summer drought and heat, have produced a constitution adaptable to hotter climes. They thrive and are popular in many parts of the world. South Africa provides a typical example. Hardy cattle to stand these quick changes, aren't they? The society holds frequent shows and sales at various centres. Here is one at Ipswich where sales were first held. The judging of yearling bulls is now taking place. All cattle at these fixes are tuberculin tested and free from contagious abortion. This is one of the prize winning bulls sold there. He went to the Argentine. Let us examine the points of the breed. Note the color, deep red, and the straight top line. The head should be masculine in character and the forehead broad. The bull should have a bold eye and wide expansive nostrils with a clean white fleshed nose. The barrel must be deep and muscular. Good length from hip to tail is essential. Back and loins must be consistent, strong and evenly fleshed. The coat should be fine and silky to the touch and the skin thin. The bull should have short, straight front legs with a well-defined brisket and plenty of width between four legs. Thighs should be deep, second thighs well filled almost down to the hock. A strong hock and a well-placed hind leg. The head of the cow should be fine, feminine and clean cut. Forehead wide a broad muzzle and a clean white nose.
shoulders are light, flat and sloping, neat on the top and smoothly blended with the body, neck clean at the junction with the shoulders, not too heavy. Ribs should be deep and well sprung, giving a roomy bow. The set of the tail should be level and well placed. It must be fine and lie closely from a long, broad rump. The udder, strongly hung, is given ample space owing to the width of the quarters. The line at the back is almost perpendicular. It should be wide and level, extending well up behind and far forward. No film of red poles would be complete unless it showed them on parade at one of the leading shows in their native county. Good cattle, fertile soil, vital food and so the red pole plays an outstanding part in feeding Britain's people. Mm -hmm.